Howdy, it's Kevin with Earth 2 Mastery, and tonight we try to take over the world. All right, grab your Valentina, because tonight's video is going to be hot. I want to give you five different types of land categories on Earth 2 that you can buy, the advantages, and some of the disadvantages of each. Okay, so first things first, I've got my discount code for new tiles in the description down below and probably pinned to the top comment. I greatly appreciate it if you use that code because it helps support my channel as well as grow my presence in the game, which I'm very happy with. Okay, so uh, if I also if you use the code, leave a comment and a like on the video. I will pick somebody from all those comments tomorrow to give away a tile in one of our guild properties. Tonight I have a tile in Grenada to give away and I have my winner from last night's video. So stick around to find out who that was. Okay guys, uh, so this is the second time I'm doing this video because I forgot to hit record apparently the first time. Maybe I'll pick up something that I missed. The first type of property that I wanna go over, what I think is the most important initially and what the devs have stressed the most is high foot traffic areas in real life. Uh, the reason that they've mentioned that is because Shane is big on augmented reality. Uh, dropping into the game from wherever you are on the earth seems like it is a possibility. So in a high tra foot traffic area in real life, you're going to have more people dropping in. Then they're going to see the advertisement. So advertising revenue is going to be higher in those spots. And presumably one of the ways that you can make an income from the land that you own is from a share of that revenue, that advertising revenue. So if you have an area where hundreds of thousands of people are a year, it's probably going to be more profitable than out in the middle of uh, the mountains where nobody's at. <clears throat> I've seen people trying to take advantage of this by buying intersections and in big cities, by buying highways because so many people are traveling on them. Uh, I personally have bought theme parks for multiple reasons, but one of the reasons is that there's high foot traffic there. And we have to think about which of those properties may benefit from that high foot traffic. Because high foot traffic at a busy intersection uh, may actually generate some revenue, but it may not because people might not be able to look at their phones. They might be busy going through the intersection, trying not to run over pedestrians. Pedestrians are trying to watch for cars. Maybe not a lot of people actually playing the game right there. As opposed to uh, a park that may have high foot traffic where people are sitting on benches, people are out on... Uh, you know, laying out in the sun and they're looking at their phones, playing the games where they have the time and they have the attention to spend on the game where they're going to be playing and seeing those advertisements and generating that advertising revenue. Mm -hmm. I have even thought about possibly buying high rises for the simple fact that whoever's in the high rise, you know, in the evenings is going to be logging onto their games and playing. If there's just a stack of people right there, perhaps I get repeat customers basically every single day dropping into that same spot. It's yet to be seen uh, exactly how that's going to work, but that is a theory of mine uh, if they do uh, drop in where they are in real life. Related to that first category of property is another category, and that's mega cities. A lot of people are building mega cities across Earth too, so that thousands of people will buy tiles and be in that area. This is going to possibly create giant amounts of foot traffic in those mega cities in the game. So even though people don't necessarily live in those areas in real life and aren't going to be dropping directly in, whenever they use a portal to get to one of those properties, they're going to be in that mega city and be able to walk around, uh, see what's going on and possibly generating a lot of advertising revenue because of the draw of the me mega city itself. There is a little bit of a drawback there because the mega cities are so big that perhaps walking around the area isn't going to make them uh, land on your property because your property can get lost in a sea of properties. In addition to that, instead of having instantly generated foot traffic like you do in a busy place that's in real life, you have to wait until there's development around you in order to generate that foot traffic. But it's still a potentially great investment idea. In addition to that, a lot of the high foot traffic areas in real life are kind of expensive. But the mega cities. Uh, early on if you get in on them are in areas that are not necessarily as popular and they're specifically picked a lot of times because of their low tile price. So you're able to get into these mega cities at a lower uh, at a lower cost point. So if you were to generate the same amount of advertising revenue, it would be a much higher yield on your investment. The third type of property that I want to talk to you about is emotional properties. There are two types of emotional properties that you could be buying. There are properties that you have an emotional attachment to and then there are properties that a large amount of people have an emotional attachment to. 
So if you are specifically buying properties that only you have an emotional attachment to, like your house or your school or your favorite restaurant downtown, that may not be a great candidate for resale in the future. And it also may not be a great candidate for advertising revenue either because, for instance, your house is in a residential area most likely and there's probably not a lot of people there or going by there in order to see the ads and get that advertising revenue for you. Um, so, you know, lower foot traffic, lower potential resale. Basically, the only reason you want to buy one of those properties is because you specifically want it. You don't want somebody else to own it and you just want to say that you own it in the game, which is perfectly fine, but don't look at getting a great financial benefit from that. The second type of emotional property that you can buy is emotional property that's uh, a, a lot of people have an attachment to. For instance, I have that one tile that I've talked about before on the Vatican wall. I've had probably 30 offers on that tile. It's clear that a lot of people have an emotional attachment to that area and they want the property. There's a lot of Catholics in the world and maybe they want to pay homage to uh, the Vatican or they just want to say they own a part of the Vatican, they want to preserve it. Whatever reason they have, they absolutely want it. And so that's a great purchase for resale value. Is it going to have a lot of foot traffic and advertising revenue for me? I don't know. It's uh, yet to be seen, but I do think that I'll be able to resell it for a profit at basically any time I want to. I saw that there was a statue of Jesus in Brazil that sold for over $1,000 a tile. So you can see how much people are willing to pay in order to preserve or protect the properties that they have an emotional attachment to. So if there's millions and millions of people that have an emotional attachment to that property, odds are one of them is going to be willing to pay a lot of money to secure that property. Uh, resource properties would be category number four that I want to go through. And this would be properties that you're planning on buying in order to hopefully generate some specific resource. So you could buy properties in the woods uh, in order to generate wood for building materials. You could buy properties on mines hoping to get whatever material that mine is for, gold, uh, platinum, uh, titanium, diamonds, whatever it is that you think you're going to get there. If you're buying property on a mine hoping to get that resource, uh, I feel like you do have better odds of getting that resource than you do outside of where the mine is for a couple reasons. The ways that I see that they could be uh, assigning resources could be congruent with what's in real life. So if they know that a gold mine is there, perhaps they'll make it a gold mine in Earth 2. If they just know that the area is rich in gold, they may give a boosted weight, uh, you know, a boosted weighted average uh, to that area as far as generating gold on your tiles. And third, it could just be random. But basically, you're increasing the odds that you're going to get gold by being on a gold mine. Because if they, give, if they make it a gold mine, obviously you automatically have a gold mine. If they just give you a weighted average in that area, then you're more likely to get gold. And if they make it random, then you're just as likely to get gold there as you are anywhere else. So there's not really a disadvantage when you're aiming for resources of buying on a mine. One of the big advantages of buying on a mine is that other people feel like it's a po you know more possible that you're going to be able to generate that resource as well. So they buy properties around you, which acts like a little tiny mega city because now there's going to be more development around you so that there's a draw to that area regardless of whether you actually generate that resource. Uh, so that's a little bit of a hedge. If you're planning on harvesting coral, and so you go out and buy tiles on a coral reef, but there's nobody within 5,000 tiles of you. If you don't get the resource that you're hoping for, you, you might not get that much benefit from those tiles. So it's important if you're going to be buying tiles specifically for resources to hedge your bets, or at least that's my opinion. Just hedge your bets by buying where other people are buying as well so that there will be development and a draw there even if you don't get the resource that you intended. The last and final type of cat, uh, property that I want to go over tonight is guild properties. This is kind of a combination of gameplay and the mega cities that we talked about before. So the benefit to getting a guild property over a mega city is that you're going to hopefully be in an area where people are looking forward to cooperative gameplay so that if that, that, uh, if that phase ever comes to fruition, you're basically going to have a team. You're going to have people to look out for your resources, people that you can trade with and hopefully uh, cooperate with when building so that you can build grander and greater things than you could on your own, possibly themed villages and stuff like that so that you can uh, be immersed in a, 
<clears throat> immersed in a little society that looks the way that it would look in real life if you were in that type of a society. It just adds an extra layer to the gameplay when everything is congruent. Uh, so I think that uh, it's, it's a good idea if you are planning on playing the game to join a guild, buy guild properties. Uh, and the good news is you're still going to get resources there. You're still going to get land income tax on guild properties. You're going to get the benefit that you would get if you're around um, mega cities or other developments. And you also get a team. You get a team effect. You get that society to immediately begin playing within the game. Uh, we have several guild properties because I thought it was a good idea to have outposts around the globe. So we started buying up islands. We have uh, islands in three different locations. Those links are in the description up above. There's also a link to our Discord where we've already started voting on issues to hopefully make the guild shape up the way that the members of the guild want it to be. Uh, so that's another advantage is that you get to have a say in how the, uh, how the guild is run as opposed to a mega city where you might just get drowned out by the thousands of other people. Uh, you know, so it's a little bit more of a niche community. So if you're looking to join a guild and you haven't yet, uh, consider Masters United because we do have tiles left on our properties. And once those fill up, we'll find a new location so that we get a new outpost. Uh, so check those in, out in the description up above. And we would welcome you as well because we like having that uh, conversation in the Discord with all of our members that we know are on our team as well. Okay, so I have my winner from last night's video that gets a tile in Grenada at our guild island. Uh, in St. Patrick, Grenada. That's Sandra Duncan. I recognize the name because she leaves comments often on the video, so I'm glad that you won, Sandra. Congratulations. Uh, you can hit me up through DM on Discord or through private message on Messenger and Facebook. Uh, I try not to ignore anybody's comments, but YouTube notifications uh, don't always come through and they get drowned out too because there's a lot of other notifications that are unnecessary. So if I forget to respond to one of your comments, it's not that I'm trying to ignore you. It's just that I get a lot of comments and I can't go back through every video and look at all the comments uh, and see who's replied. So I try to rely on the notifications and sometimes those fail me. Anyway, if you guys have any ideas as to far as the categories that I may have missed today, leave them down below. If you have anything to add to the categories I went over, uh, mark those down as well because I'd like to hear your opinions. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.